Good morning and welcome to my session. Thanks for joining my session. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to build a heterogeneous system using Yocto project. Um, myself as Sandeep Gundlupet Raju. I work for AMD. So I'm currently I'm working as a Yocto project software architect at AMD, formerly Xilinx. So I'm using Linux since 2006 when I was a college graduate and I'm using Open Embedded since uh, 2010. Currently I'm an active contributor to Yocto project uh, which includes a lot of uh, Yocto meta layers uh, such as like Pocky, meta, AMD meta, uh, Xilinx meta layers, meta ROS, meta virtualization, meta Jupyter, um, Open Embedded, U-Boot, Linux and Lopper. Currently, I'm the co-maintainer of Meta Jupyter and AMD uh, Xilinx Yocto Meta layers. You can email me at my email address and connect me at LinkedIn. All right, so we're gonna talk about what is an heterogeneous system, what is like a system device tree, and how we're gonna generate a, using system device tree, generate Yocto project configuration and using those uh, configuration, how to build a multi-config build system using Yocto project and what we deliver in the SCART gap release. So basically, Yocto project can build a variety of like uh, targets such as like Linux, FreeRTOS, Zephyr, Bare Metal, etc. Using a multi-config config, one can target a combination of these environment into a one single heterogeneous build configuration and today we're going to talk about uh, how to configure a multi-configure build with the integrated uh, binary components for heterogeneous system using system device tree process through a tool called Lopper to generate the multi-configuration machine configuration files and the resulting configuration files can be used to build Yocto project and package these heterogeneous build images to an image. Um, that is not limited to like Linux kernel, dynamic firmwares, Zen, OpenAMP, FreeRTOS, bare metal, etc. using Yocto project. So basically the modern uh, system on chip is very convoluted and design requires like heterogeneous systems such as an application processor unit and real-time processor unit, a programmable logic, etc. on a single SOC. So for these kind of heterogeneous system, we need a separate uh, build configuration for multiple uh, CPU clusters such as like A72s, R5s, Microblaze to run different uh, operating specific environment such as like OS, a bare metal or an RTOS in parallel on a single system on chip. And using this uh, for any software requires different hardware configuration, such as you need a like memory allocation, address mapping, register mapping for each uh, different CPU cores. Current device tree bindings are little complex um, with the sharing with uh, standard um, shared memory configuration for an asymmetric multiprocessing system which is today it is done in a very ad hoc way. So what is an heterogeneous system? Basically an heterogeneous system is a system with multiple CPUs or a cluster of CPUs that uses like shared memory and devices to be allocated. For example, a single SOC can contain like an application processor unit and real-time processor unit, programmable logic, which means like Microblaze, AI engine, DSP engine, and each CPUs can uh, run and execute a different operating environment independently. For example, I can run a uh, Linux on APU and a free RTOS on RPU, such kind of things. So in order to uh, build an heterogeneous system with the multi-config, we basically, it requires like three components. One is the subsystems, domains, and protection. So what is a subsystem? Sus subsystem is nothing but a group of hardware resources. 
And for example, I can have like a cluster of APUs or RPUs or microblaze or a DSP engine, AI engine, or a video codec unit or a processing uh, systems. So each subsystem can contain zero or like more than one domains. And each uh, subsystem can have like multiple CPU cluster. A subsystem can be a domain with only one core or like CPU clusters. Basically, this subsystem information is used by the firmware devices, firmware components, and typically this is defined by the hardware architect. What is domains here? So domains is nothing but a uh, hardware resources, group of hardware resources used by software, for example, like bare metal, an operating system or an hypervisor. Only one CPU or a cluster of CPUs uh, are allowed in case of uh, domains. So basically in case of uh, domains, it uses like one address space. A domain can contain an another domain like a nested domain. For example, hypervisor, I can run an uh, Zen DOM zero on a uh, APU and uh, then DOM U on an RPU. So these uh, domain information is used by the build time uh, or the runtime for each operating uh, environment or like hypervisor. Typically these domains are defined by the software architect. So next comes to like protection. So basically protection is nothing but to protect your subsystem or a domain. So this is nothing but a, like a firewall to your uh, processors. And typically, uh, this uh, uh, protection is defined by your uh, hardware registers. Uh, for example, we can have a trust zone for an APU or any hardware protection for uh, memory or uh, protection units for peripherals, etc. And basically, this protection can be defined by either a software or the hardware. And also, this uh, protections are information is used by the firmware components. Let's talk about the system device tree. So, before going to the system device tree, let's talk about like the device tree basics. So, what is mean by device tree? Device tree is a concept which describes the system hardware. Basically, it is a data structure which describes the physical device such as a bus, a CPU, memory, peripheral devices, etc. So, where are these device trees are used today? Today, device trees are used in like U-Boot, Linux, Zen, Hypervisors, and Zephyr Hotos. So, basically, a boot program loads the device tree into a client memory and what it does is it passes a pointer to the device tree to the client, then it will be loaded by the kernel or the op any operating specific environment. So t basically this uh, traditional device trees will describe only one uh, address space. It doesn't describe like multiple address spaces. So in case of a uh, heterogeneous system, it requires like multiple device trees in order to run each operating environment. For example, I need a one device tree for APU, one device tree for RPU, one device tree for microblaze or AI engine, etc. Next is the system device tree. So system device tree is an open device tree that defines the complete heterogeneous hardware, such as it includes uh, domains. Domains is nothing but a set of uh, nodes defines for each address spaces. And it also includes like resource groups. Resource group is nothing but uh, sh shared nodes grouped together, like sharing some address uh, spaces. So system device tree also describes the multiple CPU cluster and it also correspond and their corresponding view of uh, address spaces. So we can't directly use system device tree to any operating environment uh, such as like Linux or uh, Zephyr or Zen. In order to convert to a system device tree to a standard device tree, 
we use an open source tool called Lopper, which transforms the device tree, the basically. Basically, it prunes a system device tree into an operating specific environment to a standard device tree. So using Lopper tool, user can um, merge or remove nodes and resolve any of the addressing spaces here. So there is a uh, talk uh, from my colleagues Stefano and Bruce Ashfield. Uh, I've added the slides here, reference. For more details, you guys can refer to those slides on system device tree. So basically, this is the snapshot of a system device tree. So when you have like more number of uh, CPU cores, um, like APUs, CPU, uh, hard files, and microblazers, I've taken a snapshot of just one single core here. And this is the syntax of the system device tree, how it looks like. And we use a Lopper tool. And Lopper tool as a, like basically like three components. One is the LOPS, which is the Lopper operation. And another one is a Lopper assist modules. And the third one is the vendor libraries. So I haven't listed vendor libraries here. Basically it contains like um, libraries for the libftd and the pyftd. So the one which is uh, the, let's come to the lops. Lops has like different um, uh, lops uh, DTS files. Basically what it does is it takes the system device tree and transform into like different processing uh, uh, standard device tree for like APU specific, RPU specific, etc. So the one which is highlighted in the green is like very specific to like a metal xylene layer. Um, basically, it has like a three uh, uh, LOPS device tree. One is the machine name device tree, the CPU ID device trees, and the microblaze. So what does the machine name device tree does is basically it takes a system device tree and it generates the machine name. And that machine name is associated with the compatible uh, string of your uh, device tree. And next one is the CPU IDs. Basically this LOPS file, what it does is it, take, it transforms all the number of cores uh, associated with the, your system device tree and it generates the each uh, ID for the uh, each core. And next one is the microblaze, which is very specific to like a Xilinx microblazes. So basically it identifies the microblaze uh, nodes in the system device tree and it will transform to the standard microblaze device trees. And next is the LOPS assist modules. Basically the LOPS assist module mainly it contains like uh, uh, generating the domain DTS and the bare metal and any uh, additional like third party vendor um, assist files. So the generate uh, domain DTS, what it does is it has a um, module called like Linux DT. Basically you take the system device tree and use this uh, uh, LOPS assist modules and you generate the Linux device tree, uh, standard Linux device tree and you can specify which, for which core you are targeting the Linux device tree. So for example, if a processor has like uh, multiple APUs like uh, 0 to 3, so I can target for like 0, 1 or 2 or 3. By default, it will be targeted to like a 0. And same thing with the driver list and this uh, module assist is uh, very much specific to like uh, AMD Xilinx uh, uh, drivers. Basically, this target will, uh, it will generate uh, drivers, bare metal drivers for like APUs, RPUs, and microblaze. Same, same thing we can target for each uh, specific CPU cores. And the next one is the overlay DT, which has like, it generates the programmable logic overlays uh, for the PL. It can be a like full design PL or a DFX based design programmable logic. So once you take the system device tree and use the Lopper tool and transform to a standard device tree. So this is how it looks with the standard device tree. So here we have to like trim down to uh, adjust with the slides. 
So this is the uh, standard device tree format. Um, basically, it's a Linux DT format uh, for the APU. And this is the um, bare metal uh, DT format for RPU. And this is a bare metal um, DT format for a microblaze. Let's talk about Yocto project. So I'm not going to go deep dive into Yocto project. There are like several tutorials, nice documentation provided by Yocto project community. You guys can go through that. But I will just quickly give an overview of Yocto project. So Yocto project is an open source collaboration project that uh, helps the developer to create a custom Linux-based system for an embedded products and any other targets regardless of uh, hardware architecture. Basically, this provides a flexible set of like tools and environments used to create like uh, build Linux, bare metal, Zephyr, RTOS, hypervisors, images for embedded devices. And this is the Yocto project architecture diagram from the snapshot from the Yocto project mega manual. All right, let's talk about the Yocto project overview. So already like uh, Salva already talked about in the previous uh, session on the, all the, some of the terminologies used in uh, Yocto project. The first one is the Bitwake. Bitwake is nothing but a build engine uh, of open embedded. Basically it has the task executors and the schedulers. Next one is the layers. Layers is nothing but a collection of uh, metadata. Basically, it includes the configuration files, recipes, custom scripts, and it can be organized into a files and directory structure. What is recipe? Recipe is nothing but a metadata file which contains a list of tasks on how to build a particular software packages. Next one is the configuration file. The configuration file contains the global build system settings uh, in the form of like simple variable assignments. And for example, you define a variable in a recipe and you can override those uh, variables from the uh, configuration files. Next is the machine. So machine is describes the basically the hardware configuration uh, files based on your processor or the SOC tuning files, for example, HAM v5, v6, v7, etc. So next one is the user configuration. So basically in user configuration, you have like two components here. So one is the local.conf where user can override what and define what is required for the build system. And basically it has like minimal set it requires is the BB number of threads, so what is BB number of threads? Is the maximum number of threads uh, that uh, are assigned for the bit make to execute like simultaneously. Next one is the parallel make. So parallel make is nothing but the extra option you pass to the make command during the do compile task in order to specify like parallel compilation to your local build host. Um, basically it is like list of additional uh, features you include there. Um, next one is the distro is the list of our additional features you include in the image. And the other one is the extra image feature. So the extra image features like for example, you want to have uh, enable some debug tweaks or generate some uh, SDKs, such kind of things you can add it to the image. The next component is the bblayers.conf. So if you have like, uh, once you source uh, Yocto project, uh, Pocky layers, you get like list of, you get like minimal layers. In order to uh, build an heterogeneous system, there are like number of dependency layers. You can you add those dependency, la dependency layers to this uh, bblayers.conf and uh, you can build a system. And basically this is the tree structure of the, your build uh, configurations. So it has like a conf directory, a bvlayers.conf, and local.conf. So next one, how the regular default build configuration is different from the multi-config build configuration. Uh, in case of uh, 
build configuration, you will not have something called as like multi-config directories. So, you can use a single uh, bit -bake command to build like multiple images or like package different targets where each image or the package requires like different configuration like we call as like multi-config and we usually go with MC uh, as a like a short uh, terminology. And basically, so for example, if you look at the multi-config directory, we have like two configuration files, which is specific to two different architectures. One is like ARM and one is for x86. And if you want to target a build system with like multi-config, then you had like BB multi-config variable and using those variable, you specify each uh, target uh, operating environment and with spaces. You can specify n number of uh, target operating environment and uh, which is supported by Yocto project. And this is the basic difference between uh, default bit uh, build configuration and the multi-config multi -config, uh, configurations. So for example, if you want to uh, build an image, you specify like bit uh, target command. For example, bit core image minimal. In the same way, how you do it in the multi-config is like you use like bit bake, multi-config from target and again multi-config name with the target. So basically it will be like bit bake MC colon with the architecture like x86 and the image name like core image minimal and you can specify similarly for like ARM or MIPS, etc. And also, if you look at the major difference for the uh, multi-config build dependency, for example, if you have a bit big task, basically you have a task like do, do compile with some dependencies, such kind of things, right? Do image with the dependencies with core image minimal with the do root fs. Similarly, in case of multi-config, so you will have something called as like multi-config from multi-config and to multi-config and the recipe name and the task which to on which it depends on. And usually by default, um, even if you uh, leave blank, so that will be treated as like a from multi-config and we have to specify the uh, to multi-config as the mandatory thing. On the left side, if you look at like a bit -bake target, like bit -bake core image minimal, and you can use the same thing using multi-config as like bit big multi-config default target. Basically the default target points to your um, default uh, multi-config settings. Next we're gonna talk about how to generate uh, Yocto project configuration using system device tree. So in order to generate the system device tree, you need to run, um, you need to have a prerequisites here is like, uh, you need to download and install the AMD Vivado uh, hardware tools and using these hardware tools, you need to generate a design. Um, then the output of the hardware design is nothing but your XSA. And using that XSA, we have something called as system device tree generator. So you can use that XSA as the input and you run through set of commands using the system device tree generator and that will generate a system device tree files for your hardware specific. And the next thing is like you need to clone like Pocky, Meta Home Power Embedded, Meta Virtualization and Meta Xilinx layers in order to build heterogeneous system. So since the Lopper tool uh, is in meta virtualization. That's the reason we are depending on like meta virtualization. Yeah. And the next thing is like initialize and build the and uh, set up the build environment using by sourcing the OE init build uh, script. And you can add later on once you source the script. Uh, basically, it contains the uh, the BB layers contains the Pocky and meta Pocky layer and meta pocky bsp so optionally you can remove the meta pocky bsp layer and then you need to include like meta open embedded meta virtualization meta xilinx 
layers using like bit bake uh, layers add layer commands. So, these are the like uh, simple instructions uh, how do you um, like uh, clone the repos and uh, initialize the pocket uh, script and uh, add all the dependency layers. So, in case of uh, when you clone the meta xilinx we recommend to use like recursive sub modules here. So, in order to uh, clone uh, other uh, sub module uh, repositories. Next is once you have the uh, initial setup, we need to uh, use Lopper tool and how the Lopper tool does the step by step uh, transformation. Basically, Lopper tool is, uh, is part of the uh, device tree or you need to clone the Lopper tool. If you are building some uh, bare metal components uh, for AMD Xilinx uh, uh, chipset, then you need to download the embedded software repository from the MD Xilinx repo, uh, GitHub. And once you clone the Lopper tool, so you need to export the Lopper uh, DTC flag. Basically, it is nothing similar to like how you uh, had the DTC flags, uh, device tree compiler flags for an overlay. And once you source the device tree flags, uh, we're going to transform the device tree to uh, the system device tree to like standard uh, operating environment specific device trees such as like Linux, bare metal, free autos. And also for uh, any bare metal, we need to generate like uh, additional configuration files like dot H and also the bare metal should include like bare metal drivers and similar thing, same thing as for the programmable logic also. We need to have the device tree as well as the configurations. All right, here is the uh, steps how you transform uh, from a system device tree to a device tree. So basically you clone the Lopper repo and you clone the embedded software uh, repo. And these are the minimal uh, like variables we use in the system device tree. And each multi configuration or the Linux configuration, um, basically it uses like config DT file basically uh, what is the DT file it is required for each operating specific environment. And these are like unique variables, uh, not unique, it's a, like common variables, but it is associated with, with each multi-config um, machine files. All right, so first thing is you need to have a machine name. How do you generate a machine name from the system device tree? Um, Using Lopper tool, once you export the um, like Lopper DT flags, so you need to use a Lops uh, machine DTS file, and you need to target the system DT file. Basically, the system DT file is the your output of your system device tree generator uh, file. And how do I get the number of like CPU cores configurations? So for that, uh, same thing we use the Lops. But here in this case, we use like a LOPS Xilinx ID CPUs and it will scan through the system device tree and it will generate uh, a number of uh, CPU cores and it will generate the nodes for and uh, node labels for the um, CPU cores. Next is the overlays like uh, all the AMD Xilinx uh, FPGAs on the SOCs it has like a PL programmable logic and each programmable logic you can load at the boot time or you can load at the runtime. So when you load the programmable logic at the runtime, you use something called as like PL overlays, which can be loaded at running Linux. So if you are using the overlays, then we use the LOPS assist called like a uh, XLNX overlay DT and we specify what kind of the design we are using, whether it's uh, like a full PDI or the bitstream loading or you use like a DFX uh, design based uh, bitstream or the PDI. And same syntax, we use uh, similar syntax we use for the uh, without overlays, you uh, for like a, a Linux configuration we use something called as like generate domain DTS and we specify which 
core you are targeting to generate the Linux uh, DTR. So, the, once you run through the uh, lopper commands for the Linux configuration, this is the output of your machine configuration file. So, basically it contains all the multi configs, a tune files and a config DT file, a system DT file which is required only if you are generating some of the bare metal components and also it includes some of the uh, libraries and the features and we have something called as like uh, depends right in between. And similarly, we have something called as MC depends which is like multi config depends and uh, and if my Linux configuration is depending on any of the multi configs we define here. Um, similarly to the like temdir in your bit bake, so we also use uh, uh, MC uh, temdir. So basically, so you uh, take the build artifacts and you can't combine all the build artifacts in one single temp uh, directory. You need to like uh, segregate into like different buckets. So for example, have a separate temp directory for like Linux configuration, bare metal, free autos, etc. Um, apart from that, the uh, machine configuration for Linux can include like U-boot configuration, like def configs and uh, Linux def configs and any additional uh, machine features or extra image features. I'm just taking the snapshot of like what is the major thing we use for the multi-config in case of Linux configurations. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about how do you generate the um, system device, uh, uh, standard device tree using a system device tree for a bare metal or free RDOS. Using Glopper tool, we use something called as the LOPS with the um, processor specific uh, MUX uh, LOPS DTS. And using those DTS, we generate the bare metal. Uh, uh, configuration for an APU or an RPU. But in this case, you need to uh, use which processor you are try, uh, trying to target here. And the output of the, uh, uh, okay. Next one is the, uh, how to generate the driver configurations for like bare metal or like free art, free art OS. So similar to like a DTS, we, uh, in addition to the DTS, instead of like we are using the different uh, LOPS assist, here we call like a bare metal driver list and we specify the uh, target uh, processor core and we also in addition to that, we additionally pass the argument to the uh, cloned embedded software repositories. So that will generate the machine configuration files for the bare metal drivers. For example, for each bare metal drivers, it is considered as a machine feature and uh, it will be generated in the bare metal configuration file. So this is the sample output. Basically, the bare metal config has like uh, um, uh, two files, which is the features.conf. Basically, it will come with the prefix with like cortex uh, r5 0 bare metal dash features.conf. And that features.conf uh, contains a list of all the bare metals, uh, um, peripherals enabled and the drivers enabled uh, for your specific design. And the next one is uh, something called as like a driver list uh, config CMA. Uh, it is the same list of uh, which is defined in the features.conf, uh, but it will be in the format of like CMA because the embedded software uh, uh, component, bare metal components, doesn't understand what is like how it is written in the Yocto machine configuration file. Instead, it understands how it is generated with the CMake. So next one is the YAML file. Basically, YAML file this uh, nothing but how what all the drivers you have enabled in your IP, and it will specify all those uh, list all those drivers in the YAML format. And next one is the libzil conf. Basically, it is a metadata consumed for the libzil compilation in the Yocto project multi-config builds. 
for example, each driver should be linked with a specific um, uh, library. So, for the and we define it as in the package config and user can enable and disable those package config depending on what drivers they have enabled. All right. So, this is the output of the bare metal configuration file. Basically, it contains the config DT file which is pointing to the bare metal DTSI file and here we use something called embedded software machine name. So, the machine name will be uh, specific to the um, bare metal configuration and uh, it has like de default tune it will uh, it will be setting to your r5 or microblaze etc and and also it depends on the what kind of distro you are using for your um, bare metal configuration this is the basic syntax of the bare metal or the free rtos configuration All right, so for a microblaze configuration, we use uh, the lopper tool and we transform and to a microblaze configuration. Here, what we do is we specify instead of specifying to an APU or a RPU processor, we specify with the um, microblaze processor, and same thing, uh, we generate the driver list for the microblaze and uh, we use this PMC as a like platform management controller which is which contains both like a PSM and a PLN, a platform loader and the system manager. This is for the similarly, uh, we use a microbase uh, for the PSM. Once you generate the uh, configuration files, we generate something called as tune files for microblaze. So, microblaze we need to specify what kind of tune files you are going to use and this is the sample output of the PSM and the uh, PMC um, microblaze uh, configuration files. And also you can uh, set additional like uh, target flags uh, in case of a uh, microblaze. So, now we have like a DTS configuration, etc. So, we generate something called as like additional parameters, what is enabled in your uh, design. So, basically we convert those, transform those params and we uh, put it in a like a header file and that header file will have that like register address and uh, offset, etc. And that will be named as like a x parameters dot h. And for each APU, RPU and microblaze, bare metal or free RTOS configuration, we generate these params. And this is required for the bare metal or the free RTOS uh, builds, multi-config builds. Okay, so now we uh, walk through all the like step-by-step -step, uh, transformation from LOPER using like system device tree to a standard device tree. And what we have do is user can use a step-by-step -step process transformation or we have something called as an automated script which basically takes this input of input as the system device tree and it will generate the multi-config and the DTS and the machine configuration file. And this script we call as like a DT processor script and it is available in the Meta Xilinx uh, Yocto project layers. So, in order to, this DT processor script basically depends on LOPER tool. So, in order to um, generate, uh, transform a system device tree to a standard device tree, we need to build an SDK using the LOPER first. So, we have a setup uh, uh, SDK um, target recipe which takes the LOPER and it generates the sysroot and using and once the SDK is generated, so we are going to uh, install that SDK and then we run through the DT processor dot asset script which generates the DTS machine configuration files and the multi-config and later on we can use this multi-config um, 
configuration files and DT files, and you can build the target image for like multi configuration. And once the images are generated, you can emulate or run on the hardware using uh, emulate using QMU or run on the hardware. So this is the ba um, basic steps in order to set up the uh, SDK. And once you set up the SDK, you run through the script, and that script will basically transforms all the system device to uh, operating standard uh, specific environment device trees. And you can use those uh, configuration files, and you can specify the target image like machine is equal to so and so, and then you can build the target images with the core image minimal. So this is the snapshot of like how uh, the content of like uh, the multi config looks like. Basically, it includes uh, a DTS file, DTS directory. And a machine directory and machine includes like a machine configuration file. You can see at the last, you can see that is the machine we're gonna use to build it like a, as a default image. And you have the multi configuration files uh, directory which contains all the multi config for like bare metal, free art OS, and uh, um, micro blaze configuration file. So In alternatively, if you are not using like the DT processor script, uh, we have a tool called like generate machine configuration files. And this is something we implemented recently. And what it does is it takes the input as the system device tree files and it generates the DTS machine configuration files and the um, multi configs. So this uh, tool is nothing but a standalone tool and when you clone meta xilinx layers using the recursive sub modules this tool also will be cloned and you can source this tool and run through the uh, system device tree and you can generate all the images and there is a talk on the um, gen, uh, gen machine conf in the yocto project summit 23.11 so you can see the video recording and the slides uh, if you want more details on the gen machine conf and this is basically the syntax for using gen machine conf how you generate the uh, transform the system device tree to uh, standard operating device tree and the machine configuration file all right what next in scarth gap so in SCART gap, we're gonna deprecate uh, DT processor dot sh support from Meta Xilinx, and we enforce like uh, users uh, start using the Gen Machine Conf tool, and basically this is written completely in Python, so it is like more modular, and which uh, already when you run through the Gen Machine Conf, you don't need to run all the setup SDK which you um, build the lopper. Uh, native uh, packages, all those things. And with the gen machine conf, usually uh, we don't need to uh, detect the machine type. Basically, if your machine type is a, like a Zinc MP or like Vercel or any other uh, architecture, it will be dynamically detected uh, from the system device tree. And in SCART gap, we are adding uh, a BitBake class which supports like packaging and deploying like multi-config binaries or the help files to the Linux root FS. Uh, one such use case is the OpenAMP, which requires to uh, run some RPU uh, firmware packages. So on running Linux in order to uh, run OpenAMPs. And also we are targeting to add uh, Zinc 7000 and Microblaze system device tree and lopper support in SCARCAP which is targeted for like fall 2024. Cool. That's it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Hello. Um, 
Uh, so I'm fairly new to Yocto and whatnot. I've used FreeRTOS fairly extensively, and I've, I'm really interested in this idea of having the device tree for deploying FreeRTOS. Mm -hmm. How does that integrate with the build tool itself? I know that you mentioned that it's using the CMake scripts, you know, earlier on, but like, yeah. is that applied as a layer or something? How's that work? So it is applied as a layers. So basically, so it is all when you clone the embedded software repo uh, and from the Xilinx repositories. So it has all the free RTOS components and the bare metal components. That's where we use all the system device tree approach and we use the YAML infrastructure, uh, YAML uh, files in order to uh, detect all the processor type and what kind of drivers you are including in the free RTOS or the bare metal. And we generate based on the uh, configuration, we generate all the dri drivers. And, uh, and so that, that configuration is translated into like the free RTOS config, whatnot, yeah. where you're deciding which kernel features get turned on and such? Uh, kernel features, I'm not sure <laughs> on that one. I'm not a like free RTOS expert. That is something uh, I can uh, figure it out and I can let you know. All right. Thank you so cool. much. Thank you. Um, is AMD committing to um, support uh, Scarthcap through its entire LTS or yep. just that uh, is something new we are uh, till today we are uh, very much tied with the uh, hardware releases that is something we are trying to shift our gaze from hardware to software so our if you look at our previous releases like kernel is LTS Ubuntu is LTS but not the Octo project right yeah. so that is something we are uh, moving our uh, strategy from like uh, hardware specific release to like a LTS specific release. So we're gonna have Yocto project LTS. That's the reason what, why we are doing all the system device tree, everything is we wanted to basically decouple from the hardware tools. And even if you generate the, uh, um, like anything specific to your IP, but everything will be in the form of like system device tree. And we use the system device tree as an input uh, to the, system uh, multi-config builds. So the the updates that you guys have traditionally done, yep. are those going to be specifically targeted at Scarthcap throughout yep. the entire cycle? Okay. Hi, my question is related to the first part of your presentation when, where you talked about uh, multi-core systems. Mm -hmm. um, in a Xilinx single core setup with uh, one so with a single core ARM plus FPGA. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the best usage of replacing the single core with a dual core? What would be the best usage of the second core in regard to boot time optimization and performance in general? Um, I'm really not sure. So, yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> to answer your question. So, with the boot time optimization, in if you the replace... Performance in general, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one. So, if you just replace a single core with a dual core, right? Um, what, what could the second core be used for? So second core, you can use it for a bare metal or like an amp, right? Open amp is like a, a symmetric multiprocessor. You can communicate from one core to another core, right? So you have like two uh, uh, APUs and you can talk to each other using an amp concept. Mm -hmm. And what, what would be the effort of, of this, making this implementing this communication? So already we support OpenAMP. So OpenAMP is one more uh, open source organization. So with the uh, AMP, you can communicate from one processor core to another processor core. So you can run some like shared memory and resource utilization, all that can be done through AMP. Is that already available in Metax Silinx or some other Oh, layer? Uh, AMP is uh, even, uh, I I think it is, uh, even Linaro is part of uh, our AMP project. I know like uh, even uh, you can run AMP on different uh, uh, SOCs, not just like Xilinx specific. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. But I'm not sure on the performance uh, yeah. uh, numbers when you replace it or when you communicate between the two.
Hey, Sandeep. Um, so the, for, for bare metal and free Artos applications, the expectation is that they're going to come in from the embedded software repo, right? Yes. So let's say I have an application. I, I would clone the embedded software repo first. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps grab something that exists already and then base it off on that. Because um, it seems like the, it's, it's, it's all wired through that repo. There's, yeah. there's no way to like use a separate repo with the application. Yeah. You can use a separate repo. That is something we are uh, trying to uh, decouple in uh, 24.2. Mm. You can, like, what you can do is I can have, a, like, my own bare metal application, which is not tied to, um, like, embedded software, right? Like, uh, generating all the X parameters, dot, so all those things. So some, something we are trying to uh, achieve in like 24.2 release time frame, so user can bring in their own bare metal and try to compile with the multi-configs. So for example, if you look at the Kriya products, we use something called as image selectors. Basically it does like AB mechanism update uh, boot firmware components. So that uh, we are trying to decouple first so that Right now, it is tightly coupled with the embedded software repo. We are trying to decouple. Once we decouple that, so we can bring in any like uh, bare metal applications, and you can uh, compile using the uh, without depending on the embedded software repo. That's our, our radar. Thanks. Just a little to your question as well. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as a follow up to that one as well. Um, is the idea, I'm, I'm really fascinated with the idea of using device tree for things like, you know, I, I mm. noticed the memory regions and stuff, like, you know, uh, FreeRTOS is, is having its support for like um, protected memory regions, like yeah. MPUs, things like that. Mm -hmm. is, is sort of the, the, the user intent of this system that will have access to that device tree, you yes. know, as part, of the build, as part of the build scripts, and then we, basically read that device tree in order to Correct. do things like. So you know, user will have access to those uh, device tree. And uh, even if you look at like a Zephyr, that is something we haven't evaluated. Zephyr uses the device tree, right? So we wanted to have the same concept. And even if someone want, some customers want to replace a free autos with a Zephyr, they can do it. So, and Yocto already supports with the meta Zephyr layer. So it should be like pretty much uh, easy and straightforward. Some really fascinating <laughs> stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Hello. Uh, just a small question. Um, the DT process script, um, this approach you, you demonstrated, it is valid for which version of Vivado and... Uh, so right now service. the DT processor script is independent of the v uh, Vivado version, uh, but you can use it for like 23.1 and 23.2 uh, Vivado tools. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it looks like we are over time. Cool, thanks. Yeah, for thanks coming. for the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. A, a short question. Thanks for your talk, um, first of all. I did a similar concept for the other SOC FPGA vendor. <laughs> and that means your concept works only for AMD, mine's for the other one. Is there any intention to set up a standard? Because it's not only for SOC FPGAs, because we have seen more and more of these complex SOCs arising. So all the system device tree and lopper, it's open source. It's not like tied, very much tied to like Xilinx specific. And in order to like do some like specific vendor specific uh, components or libraries like Lopper as that vendor libraries, right? Or the assist files, you can bring in your vendor stuff and you can process through. Okay, thanks you. Thank you. Or, cool. Thank you, looks like I'm over time, yeah. To look at.